This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church, Covington. Know that you are loved, you are valued, and you are welcome just the way you are. We welcome the young and the old. We welcome you if you are worshiping with us for the very first time, or if you are sitting in the same area of the pews you have been sitting in since you were a child. We welcome the energized and the tired. We welcome families of all shapes and sizes. We welcome the happy-hearted. We wel welcome those for whom are grieving this day. We welcome you if you have it all together, and we welcome you if life is simply a mess. There is more than enough room in the inn, room for the complicated, room for the questions. And we are glad that the Holy Spirit led you to this worship space this holy Sunday. For those worshiping in person, you have your worship guides in hand. Your hymnals are in the pew pockets in front of you. And if you are visiting with us today, if you're a grandparent or a visitor for the first time, we encourage you to fill out our contact card. It's located in the pew pocket in front of you so that we can follow up with you early in the next week. We do welcome all who are worshiping online. We are grateful that you are part of our worshiping community, whether you're worshiping with us right now on Sunday morning or you're worshiping on Thursday during your afternoon walk. We are grateful for you. We do hope that you'll put a, put a chat, put a, a message in the chat to let us know that you are part of our worshiping community this day. Friends, we have a wonderful week coming up. It is Christmas week. And so we have our Christmas pageant today, so I want to give an applause to all the parents who got their kids here. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> In a season of hustling and bustling parents, we are grateful for all of your children. It is so much fun to see the little halos bobbing up and down right now in the pews. This Wednesday is our longest night service. It's December 21st. It's the longest night of the year, and we will recognize our weariness in a weary world during such a joyful time. We will hold space for the ways in which our hearts ache and we grieve this holiday season. So please join us on Wednesday at 5.30 for our longest night service. Our Christmas Eve service will be on Christmas Eve at 6 o'clock. We'll have a candlelight service. And Christmas morning's on a Sunday, my friends, and we will have worship, we'll have communion around the table. And kiddos, what do you get to wear to worship that day? Your jammies! Yes! So we can't wait to see you. We also have our sandwich ministry this week with Street Outreach, where we go and take, we prepare sandwiches to go out to feed our unhoused neighbors. So I encourage you, if you'd like to participate in acts of service this Christmas week, that you will join us. With that, my friends, let us now turn our hearts and minds to worshiping the living God through the lighting of our Advent candle. Our own Alice Walker and her twin sister Becky Ramsey have an organ concert this afternoon at 3 o'clock at the Methodist Church. So you'll want to join that time of celebration and praise this Christmas. Isaiah spoke to a people called Chosen, to a tribe called Israel, with the light of hope. Gabriel came to a town called Nazareth, to a girl called Mary with a light of hope. Mary went to a place called Bethlehem to a stable called a nursery with a light of love. We rejoice with Mary, for love has flesh. Come now, child of Mary, come now, O Prince of Love. Today we light the candle of love as a reminder that from the very first generation, God has surrounded us with love. May this good news, these threads of love, not only weave deeper connections between neighbors, but shape our actions and allow us to see God more clearly. <laughs> Candles. 
In a lowly world, let this light shine bright. From generation to generation, we are held in God's love. Thanks be to God for that good news. Amen. One of the greatest gifts and challenges of faith is that we cannot be Christian alone. We need one another. We need one another to grow. We need one another to love. And we need one another to see God more clearly. So together, let us lift our voices in unison. Let us lean into the ties that bind as we pray to our merciful God. God of today and tomorrow. When Mary was pregnant and afraid, she ran to her cousin Elizabeth's house. Elizabeth threw open the door with joy and showered blessings upon her. How often do we have that same opportunity? How often do we leave the door locked, the curtains drawn, and the lights off? How often do we shower critique or judgment instead of blessings and joy? Gracious God, forgive us for our wrongs. We want to see you when we see our neighbor. Amen.
Friends, this is what I know, that God delights in us. God throws open the door just like Elizabeth and says, come on home. There is room for you here. And in that moment, we are blessed. In that moment, we are forgiven. In that moment, we are seen, healed, and welcomed home. So rest in this good news. You are saved by grace. Let us respond together using the words from Mary's song. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. Church, we are forgiven. We are free to try again. Hearing that God extends peace to us through Jesus Christ, we are invited to extend that peace to one another. So let us dance with the Holy Spirit this morning. I invite you to place your hands over your heart and extend them forward. Hands over your heart. Extend them out into the world and do a little shimmy. Say hello to your neighbor. Yes. Please join me in saying, May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. You may be seated. And at this time, we invite all children who are participating in the Christmas pageant to come forward through the center aisle or the aisle over here. Just a second. <laughs> All right. It was the evening of Christmas when all through the town. Every inn was so crowded, no room could be found. Tired Mary and Joseph, who went door to door, at last found a place on a small stable floor. Thank goodness, said Mary, who tiptoed inside. The mice saw the donkey and scurried to hide. The rest of the creatures all cuddled up tight in hopes that they might have a calm, peaceful night. Pigeons were nested all snug in their bed, while visions of breadcrumbs danced round their head. The cows closed their eyes, the oxen lay down, the doves cooed so gently, the lambs made no sound. The moon through the trees was just starting to glow, with a glimmer of light on the stable below, when quite by surprise came a newborn babe's cry that woke all the animals sleeping nearby. Up jumped the cows and the oxen and sheep, 
up popped the pigeons aroused from their sleep. And they all came to gaze at the small baby boy as we all hugged him with joy. But the song of the angels, the word that they said, soon let the men know that they had nothing to dread. Dear shepherds, this wonderful news that we bring, a Savior is born, it is Jesus the King. They ran to the stable and pe peeked through the door and saw something they never imagined before. There in a manger, a baby boy lay, no blankets, no pillows, his bed made of hay. <laughs> In the that small stable came a splendid king with gifts for the baby all beautiful things. They jumped from the camp moves and knelt at his feet with gifts for the baby all beautiful things. Frankincense, gold, and myrrh that smelled sweet. The stable was filled with wonderful light as stars above Bethlehem twinkled so bright and high in the heavens God whispered, My son, you'll bring hope to the world and love everyone. Then back to their slumbers, the animals curled, amazed at this babe who had entered their world. As Joseph and I got ready for bed, we snuggled our baby and kissed his sweet head. As I lay Jesus asleep in the hay, I thought about all that had happened that day. The mice heard her whisper as she tucked them in tight. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night.
thank you guys for that special night in Bethlehem in your sign of the Lord. Thank you for the angels. Thank you for the animals. Thank you for shepherds. Thank you for Mary and Joseph. And especially thank you for Jesus. Amen. for a quick picture if you want to grab a picture by the count of three. So if you want your picture, everybody smile real quick. Yay, let me see those teeth. Teeth, teeth, teeth. All right. My friends, our children are welcome to wiggle and giggle in their seats or go to um, the nursery. They will be part of our benediction at the end. All right, good job, friends. <laughs> Can we get an amen for our children today? Amen. All right, friends, let us turn our hearts and minds in prayer. If you'll join me, please. Great voice of truth who speaks through unexpected voices and through the voices of our children. Great power of the universe who works mighty deeds from fragile possibilities. We gather here to know your presence and to listen for your truth. We listen in your presence and we listen for you in the giggles, in the songs, and in the angels' declaration. Extend our listening that we may magnify you. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke. We are in chapter 1, verses 39 through 58. Hear now the word of the Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and Elizabeth. When Elizabeth, heard, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in their thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. 
He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich, rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. I heard this benediction every Sunday morning when my parents got us up and we went to church. Every Sunday morning at Dahlonega Presbyterian Church. This benediction is sown on the inside of some of my souls, placed over my heart. It is a phrase. It is a charge. It is a benediction that I strive to uphold every single day. So church, I am excited because today we get to pause and take time. We get to take time and celebrate the many ways that we see God in one another. And I'll start by saying, I see God in each of you. As I look out in this sanctuary, generations of generations, fate stories, stories of triumphs and trials, yes, I see God in each one of you. As someone said this past week, when you look out, you see the kingdom of God at First Presbyterian Church, Covington. So I invite you to turn around. Look around. Go on ahead, you can move. Look around in the sanctuary. Look at the faces that have gathered here. We see the face of, we see the face of Christ in one another. We see the face of Christ in the children as they sing away in a manger, fall off the hay, scurry around as angels with crooked halos. This past week, I invited you to share with me how you have seen the face of God this season. So as part of our word proclaimed, I lift up the ways we have seen God in each other. The youth caroling in people's homes at Maryvale and the Oaks. Neely, I've seen God and the children running outside on the front lawn, climbing the infamous tree. I have seen God this Christmas on the faces of our grandchildren and hearing their precious laughter. I've seen God and my mom blowing out the candles on her birthday cake after a health scare a few weeks ago. Oh, Neely, I saw God in my classroom telling me to retire because some kids took brown paint and put it down the mirror in the bathroom. I saw God when the doctor came in the hospital room and said it wasn't cancer, it wasn't a stroke. I saw God in the person who paid all their bills for the month and had five dollars to spare and came to the church. I saw God in the music and in the readers during lessons and carols. I saw God in the officer training sessions with the elders and deacons. I've seen God in newfound friendships. I saw God in people showing up to support my child at her swimming competition. I see God in the face of a teenager who opens their room and their doors to allow their little sibling to sleep safely, safely at night and not be afraid of the dark. 
I saw God in the bone marrow match for my friend. I see God in the glorious colors of a sunset. I saw God most recently in the sweet sounds of a baby's laughter. I see God in the rainbow after the storm and in the sunbeams breaking through the dark cloud. I saw God in the faces of the NICU nurses and the newborn babies. I saw God in the faces of cancer patients ringing the bell. I see God in the love of my spouse, in the flowers and the leaves. I see God in my daughter who is singing O Little Town of Bethlehem as she jumped in the car. And I see God in the new faces coming to church and all of us praising God together. On this fourth Sunday, excuse me, on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we acknowledge the comfort, joy, and love of seeing God and our loved ones walk in the front door and know they are home for Christmas. And at the same time, we grieve the ones for whom will not walk through the door. We will miss their presence, and so we acknowledge their absence. Church, in our gospel story this morning, I imagine Mary bursting into Elizabeth and Zachariah's home, the abrupt entry where upon hearing Mary's greeting, Elizabeth felt her baby skip like a lamb for sheer joy. And then we can hear Mary sing, I am bursting with God news. I am dancing the song of my Savior. You see, church, Elizabeth and Mary see God at work, and they named it out loud. Their connection inspires Mary to sing a radical hymn of praise, declaring how God's liberating love remains steadfast Throughout all the ages, Elizabeth and Mary see the divine in one another. And from generation to generation, we too can see the divine in one another and how God is at work in our relationship. We find God in one another. Better yet, God finds us through the gift and the faces of one another. Thus, the way we see the divine in each other, my friends, ought to impact how we live and move in the world. When we view every human being as a child of God, we generate a different kind of world. When we view every human being as a child of God, we generate a different world. Beloved, I can only imagine where we, live, where we see the face of Christ in everyone we meet. And everyone we meet sees the face of Christ in us. So my friends, I ask us this day, when will we see what God sees? Arthur Riley, in his book, This Here Flesh, writes, We need other people to see our own faces, to bear witness to their beauty and truth. God has made it so I never truly know myself apart from another person. I want someone to bear witness to my face, that we could behold the image of God in one another and believe it on one another's behalf. He writes, I don't have many certainties about God, but I have many hopes. And chief among them is that it is true when they say that God is love, is made of love. And God looks at the faces of you and me, and without hesitation or demand, God delights. God looks at the faces of you and me, and God delights. Church, today we delight with Mary and Elizabeth. 
We burst with God news and dance the song of our Savior, and our souls cry out with a joyful shout. And yes, church, we delight when we see our children as they bring the good news of great joy for all of us to hear and to go and tell the story. May we too tell a story with innocence and joy and truth and grace and exclaim the face of God in one another. May it be so. In response to God's word read and proclaimed this day, let us now affirm our faith together using the words found in our worship guide. We believe that creation is inextricably linked. We belong to one another in an undeniable way. We are bone of bone and flesh of flesh, life breathed into dust. We believe that God invites us to live into that truth to love without abandon, to see the good in one another, 
to trust that all belong to God. We know that this life of connection is easier said than done, which is why we gather in this space week after week, generation after generation, to be reminded we see God in each other. This we believe. Amen. You may be seated. A reminder that our worship guide insert contains a list of prayers for our community and list people by name so that you can pray for them in the days and weeks to come and we encourage you to do so. Now let us turn our hearts to God in prayer. God of yesterday and God of tomorrow, from the very beginning you gave us the gift of relationships. From the very beginning you tucked us into communities. From the very beginning you wired us for connection. From the very beginning, you made our hearts capable of love. Thank you, God. This gift of relationship has led us to people who lead us to you, and we are better for it. So today, we want to say thank you for our Elizabeths, for the people who have thrown open the doors for us, who revel in our joy who point out your presence in our lives and who are quick to affirm us and call us blessed. Those people come in many shapes and sizes. For some of us, the Elizabeths in our lives are family members, parents and grandparents who have cheered us along the way. For others, teachers and coaches, neighbors and scout leaders, professors and counselors come to mind. And we can't forget the way our chosen family, friends, and partners have been like Elizabeth for us. These people have reminded us that love, what love looks like in the hurting world, which has pointed us back to you. So today, God, we ask for your help in opening our eyes even more. We want to see you in those who love us well and in those who don't. We want to see you in those whose coffee order we have memorized and in those we've never talked to. We want to see you not only in those who are family, who look like us or think like us, but in those who come from very different places and positions in life. From generation to generation, you have left your fingerprints all over creation. Help us to be like Elizabeth, to see and celebrate glimmers of your good news in all walks of life. With hope, we pray as Christ taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, God has blessed us with so much, and for that we are thankful. And so now we return that which belongs to God through the collection of our tithes and gifts.
Angels filled the evening sky and with joy began to sing. Glory be to God on high, let the bells of heaven ring. Alleluia, shout for joy, sweet music fills the sky. The heavens ring while angels sing a Christmas be seated. And for our prayer of gratitude, I will open us up in prayer, and then you are invited to share one word, prayers of gratitude aloud to celebrate in our community. Let us pray. God, we thank you that from generation to generation, you are with us. We thank you for reasons to gather, to worship, and sing praise to you. We thank you for Christmas carols, Christmas trees, and Advent wreaths to remind us of your love for us and your son, Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you for the voices of children who proclaim the good news that unto us a Savior is born. We lift our prayers aloud to you now. God, we lift this, our prayer, up to you. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
know what words to say right now because I'm tearing up. May you see the face of Christ in every one you meet. And may every one you meet see the face of Christ in you. This is Mary's God news. May we dance and sing the song of our Savior. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen.